Hi, I'm Jeff Yarger. I'm a professor of chemistry, biochemistry, and physics. And I'm Vladimir Mujica. I'm a professor at the School of Molecular Sciences. So we're making this video to quickly uh, go through a discussion question out of Atkins edition two, Physical Chemistry for the Life Sciences, which is a, a book we often use in uh, physical chemistry with a biological focus at Arizona State University. And for further information, we, we have a general website for this. Let's look specifically at the question, which is asking to kind of explain what residual entropy is. And in the textbook, um, their example, uh, both kind of a worked example and a figure that I've, I've pulled from the textbook, just kind of shows that, you know, we think of water as, as having, you know, two hydrogens attached to an oxygen, but in, in its crystalline lattice, it forms two hydrogen bonds, and you can have a degree of hydrogen disorder in that solid material and end up with a residual entropy, which is what I think of as just the amount of some type of disorder at zero degrees Kelvin or as you approach it. Right, and, and probably an important uh, thing here is to realize that entropy, due to the way Boltzmann introduced in the statistical mechanics, is one of the few quantities in physics, at least, and it's the only one in thermodynamics where you can give absolute values. Yeah. Because he came up with this, well, at the time, it was, it was a rather counterintuitive conclusion that the, the entropy goes to zero as temperature goes to zero Kelvin. But it turns out that under some conditions, it doesn't go to zero. And the, the, the key equation is Boltzmann equation that connects the number the disorder in the system. So if there is no disorder, there is only one configuration. Right. Well, we would think of as one microstate. One you know, microstate. One, one state that defines everything. But in practice, there never is. You know, in right. practice, you know, you, you know, there's always a way to have some type of disorder in a practical material. The one the, I like to point out, for example, is the isotope. I mean, you know, even if you take something as pure argon, you're still going to have multiple isotopes in, you know, uh, in other words, you can have isotopic, you know, randomness throughout a crystalline. It's not an isotopically, you know, when you take pure silicon, you're rarely taking pure silicon 28. There's a disorder in where the silicon 29 is. Right. You know? and, and again, the, the key thing is that in few materials, we have this condition, perhaps in perfect crystals with no different configuration. But this is the, the microscopic state. And now this, this quantity, this equation is key to understand that as temperature increases, then this number increases fantastically rapidly. Yeah. This is one of the fastest increases in number in nature, the number of microscopic configurations that are compatible with a macroscopic state. And, and so, so we have this limiting law that in under right. some conditions. Well, and I think it, it's so broken. important, right? Because as you alluded to at the very start, like I think of it as, I mean, we're in a school of molecular sciences. We're, we're teaching biochemistry. Chem we're teaching the molecular basis. This is, while thermodynamics is a macroscopic theory, this is the one hold that they initially get in the second law to really make hold of the a micro, you know, molecular level details in thermodynamics. You yeah. can pull into it. And I, I think it's, you know, it, it, you know, it almost can't be stated uh, over importance. Uh, we can move. Oh, yeah, right. OK. Now, but the, the other thing I was going to say is that when thermodynamics was created, invented, depending on how you see it, the idea of molecules was not, was yeah, not no. clear at all. I mean, yeah. you, you can do all of thermodynamics forgetting about the existence of molecules. This is not necessary except for entropy and this particular law because this has to do with disorder and at the, at the molecular level. But other than that, thermodynamics has to do with how heat is transferred and how you can use that heat to to make to perform work. Right. So in these two concepts, how do you can transform heat into work? 
mm, there's no consideration apparently about disorder, but it turns out that there is this molecular description that puts everything together. And this is what this is a fantastic example of how that connection works. Right. And I think, you know, has a lot of practical, even though oftentimes it gets overlooked residual entropy because it's often small, you know, with respect to entropy associated with phase changes or anything, you know, large that, that'll have, or, or even heat capacities. Like you said, it, this, this number goes up so fast, you know, the amount left and even, even things with huge amounts of disorder are still fairly small, but, you know, measurable and really important to help at the molecular level understand, you know, uh, molecular configurations and what's going on at that yeah, level. Absolutely, and, and uh, the, the, the fact that you can tie that to that level of molecular description is one of the fascinating features of, of this interplay between the microscopic description of thermodynamics and the, and the microscopic description. Yeah, I think, it, you know, to just highlight some exact you know, points where it's so important. I think entropy is the one thing they grasp, students grasp, where, you know, like you said, like how fantastically it goes up because of understanding, you know, vibrational, rotational, translational degrees of freedom within molecules to understand how it relates to information theory, Shannon. You know, it, it just brings in so entropy can bring in so many different levels to, to look at, um, you know, systems from a different perspective. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned, entropy is, is also connected. And this is also very interesting. Entropy is connected to information. Yeah, directly through probability, yeah. And the way this connection is, is made in statistical mechanics is that uh, the, the, the entropy is minus Boltzmann constants, the sum of probability times the log of probability. Yeah. Now, we see that this goes, if there is only one probability here that dominates and all the others are zero, this goes to Boltzmann equation. This goes yeah. eventually to k log of that particular one. So, so we see that this very general equation that connects to game theory to information yeah. theory. Well, that's why a things. lot of people, even outside of sci science, a lot of people have heard of the word entropy because you see it in computer science so often. In now. economy. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, I don't think it can be overstated, you know, even though we're, we're covering biochemical systems, how this plays across so many different disciplines Absolutely. now. So, well, thanks for the discussion. No, thanks to you.